And welcome back to the book of Exodus. Uh, hard to believe we're already at chapter 9 here, 40 chapters in this book, but we are now at chapter 9. We're going to look at the first five verses. I'll read them out. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and speak to him. Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go and continue to hold them, behold, the hand of the Lord will come with a very severe pestilence on your livestock, which are in the field, on the horses, on the donkeys, on the camels, on the herds, and on the flocks. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, so that nothing will die of all that belongs to the sons of Israel. The Lord set a definite time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. Now, God's proclamation that he's going to kill the livestock of Egypt, this is a massive escalation. Much of the wealth of Egypt is held in the cattle. That is, uh, to this day, even in Africa, a lot of the wealth is, is, you know, they don't hold the wealth in some of the more primitive places. I've been to some places in Kenya, and the wealth is in the cattle. <laughs> it's not like they have it on a credit card. It's in how many cattle do you have? And the, a lot of the wealth of Egypt is in the cattle. Flies, frogs, and gnats, and, and, and mosquitoes, and whatever it is, that's pretty irritating. It's pretty, it's maddening. You know, it's, it's highly frustrating. But this now, now we're talking about an actual giant hit on the actual literal wealth, the literal substance of the nation. You know, frogs is one thing, but this, what's being told Pharaoh ahead of time, this would be a catastrophic, a truly economic catastrophe for Egypt. Nevertheless, the warning is given and the plague is foretold a day beforehand. Why? Well, maybe to give Pharaoh time to think it over, you know, that big R word is hanging out there, right? Maybe, maybe repentance would be kind of something to give, you know, some possible thought to. So there is where it is. Now, another special point is here that it's announced that, you know, again, God will make a distinction between the livestock of the Egyptians and the livestock of the Hebrews. So if the livestock of the Egyptians is hit and destroyed, the Egyptians are going to be humiliated. They're, they're, that's giant piece of Egyptian economy. Meanwhile, the Hebrews, their adversaries, I guess they're their adversaries, uh, theirs will survive just fine. So this is a double humiliation. This isn't, this isn't good for business. This isn't good for Pharaoh's PR numbers, I don't think. So this would be a downgrade for the Egyptians, an upgrade for the Hebrews, and I want you to notice the stakes are very rapidly increasing now. It is ramping up. Now we're going, you know, kind of on one of these curves, you know, where it becomes exponential. And the last devastations are going to be the most severe. You know, unless Pharaoh would maybe like get his act together here and repent. Now, in contrast to where in other occasion here, for example, God previously allowed Pharaoh to set the time for a plague to end. This time, God just simply declares, okay, I'm going to do it at this time. This is when it's going to be. Now, in contrast to previously where uh, God allowed Pharaoh to set a time uh, regarding these plagues. This time, God just announces it. Boom, it's going to be tomorrow. Things are kind of shifting. Whereas initially, Pharaoh had more of an opportunity, more of an interactive, negotiating uh, opportunities. He's, he's reneged several times now. He is uh, not given anything. He, his opportunities are changing. His opportunities are reducing. They're going away. Stubbornness leads to withdrawal of options. We should seek the Lord while he may be found. Right now, you know, you and I have options. We don't know what options we'll have tomorrow. And that's something for you and I to think about. God bless you and see you tomorrow.